Well, tomorrow marks two weeks since Helene made landfall and brought devastation throughout the southeast. And earlier this week, the Insurance Institute of Business and Home Safety released its initial findings on the damage with a goal of improving preparedness for future hurricanes. Helene was one of those events that we saw the most catastrophic impacts occur well inland away from the coast. And this is something that we as weather forecasters, weather enterprise members have to work to try to help folks understand the potential for these kind of events. I'm guessing no one would have thought of how catastrophic this could be, but hurricanes aren't just a coastal problem. They are an inland problem, both from a wind and rain issue. Now for Georgia, it was the second recent major hurricane to make landfall and devastate parts of our state with really destructive winds. Tree damage in, in South Georgia was, was tremendous, all the way from Valdosta through Augusta, even into the Midlands of South Carolina. And trees are kind of a, a thing we have to balance. Trees can do a very good job of, of even being an old school windbreak, helping slow those winds down until they're not, until we see catastrophic tree damage. We, we have trees falling on homes. That's going to be a huge source of that inland wind damage from Helene is just simply the tree damage. Yeah, now here we are two weeks later awaiting another major hurricane landfall. Now this one could bring more storm surge again to the Tampa area, which was also hit by Helene. Dr. Giamanco elaborated on how vulnerable that that part of the coastline is. Helene moved about 100 miles or so offshore, but it produced enough onshore winds and it moved all that water. You know, we saw seven, eight feet of surge along Tampa Bay. If you look at a worst case scenario, take Milton, for example, if Milton jogs further left today, comes in further north, you know, we're going to see water amounts that are three, four, five feet above that, maybe even higher across uh, Tampa Bay. Now, right now, we might see the peak surge if you follow the official track further south toward the Venice area. But that part of the country is the second most vulnerable area. And there's so much development there across uh, really that entire metro area yeah. down the length of the west coast of Florida. And you got to hope that all the people who were under mandatory evacuation warnings took heed of that and decided to get out. But in a good scenario today, the path of Milton has shifted a little bit further south. This is actually a live picture. It's over Hillsborough Bay. It's very hard to see, but there are skyscrapers in the distance. We're awaiting this Milton to make landfall and where it's going to make landfall is likely just south of Tampa. So that's going to help them not see the worst case scenario for storm surge. But things will be a lot worse, though, to the south of Tampa. We're talking near Sarasota, Venice Beach, down into Cape Coral, Fort Myers. This live image is coming in from Sarasota. We're looking towards Lido Key and Armand's uh, Circle. That's where there's all the high-end shopping the area. You can see the waves coming down. What I've been watching in this camera is that these two tall trees, when we see more of that heavy rain and squally weather moving in, I start to notice those trees bending. We're going to keep an eye on that camera the rest of the evening as we start to see the eye wall of Milton coming on shore. But again, it's the areas south of landfall that get the worst storm surge. Tampa is going to end up getting, I think, a little bit of negative storm surge. So that will mean that we don't see as much of that bad flooding. But it'll be worse closer to Venice Beach, Port Charlotte, Boca Grande, and also down into Fort Myers area. That's where we'll see the peak storm surge levels. And I'm also expecting some very modest storm surge possible along the Georgia coast with that circulation around Milton. You can see live radar right now, very heavy rain throughout all of the Tampa metro area. And it's the eye still offshore by about 65 miles or so. We're going to start to see that eye wall pivoting inland. So it's really going to be kind of this northern, rather southern edge of Tampa down through Sarasota County that ends up getting, I think, that eye wall moving in versus the northern side of Tampa. So we'll measure it for you. It's about 65 miles off the coast. But when we start to see that eye wall wobbling on shore, that's when that wind damage threat significantly increases. So that will happen later on this evening. If you have family down there, tell them treat that like a tornado warning inside away from windows. Stay inside away from the windows while that eye wall is passing over you. But you notice on the eastern side, we've been watching those tornadoes react to tornado outbreak today from that. But on the northern side of the system, cloud cover pushing into Georgia and a couple of little showers there in southeastern Georgia as well. Now, as this makes landfall, it's got such a big wind field. It's going to be more than 300 miles across after landfall that we will see some of those tropical storm force winds pushing into Georgia. But the rainfall amounts with this will be highest along the I-4 corridor rather than the south side of this system. You 